Hello, everybody. So it's really nice to see so many people here. I'm really humbled. And as you can see already, I changed the title of my presentation. So it was Tecton versus Jenkins X. You know, it's, a, it's just a pitch to, to get accepted at the conferences. Actually, there is no competition here. So because actually the, the second project is based on Tecton, so it's just, let's say, a comparison. So who here is practicing CI CD? You can raise your hands. Wow, such a good audience. Normally in other conferences, there was just one guy. And I think he was following me at every conference. <laughs> but he's not here today. So why do we do CI CD? In my opinion, we do CI CD because we want a quick and continuous feedback loop. Why? I, be, I believe that none of us actually can write the perfect code straight away. So coding is just a sequence or really small experiments. And we would like to basically gather feedback as soon as we can. Why? Because we want to delight our customers. And basically, we have to guarantee that our software can work properly on production. We know that reality actually sometimes looks something like this. It's war. You can see smoke, you can see gunfire, you can see people screaming. And here, at the bottom left corner, you can see even the product owners dead on the floor. <laughs> it's a mess. Yeah, but our goal is to continuously improve. So we should try to do that. But let's take a step back. We have seen massive changes in the last, let's say, five years with the rise of containers, microservice architectures, container orchestrators in order to deploy and manage containers at scale, and the de facto standard nowadays is Kubernetes. This is a big paradigm shift, and is actually influencing also the design of CI CD tools. Why? If you think about the tools we use normally, they were not designed for the cloud. You can see the logo of Jenkins, for instance, here. This is the most used CI CD tool out there. And it's awesome. It has allowed us, let's say, for like more than 10 years to go fast, but still was not designed for the cloud. So we have a big JVM running with gigabytes of memory, and it's continuously running, so wasting CPU cycles if you are on the cloud. And since we pay for CPU usage or memory usage, we would like something with a serverless, let's say, mode on demand. And that's where the project Tecton comes in. So it's a pretty new project, has been announced more or less one year ago. And it's trying to redefine, in my opinion, CI CD for the cloud and for Kubernetes. Basically, it stems from the Knative uh, build projects. And uh, the Knative build project was used to build functions, let's say, into containers. So in order to, to have a serverless, let's say, workloads on top of Kubernetes. And the community was so excited that they decided they wanted more. Tecton, basically. Tecton, so my view of Tecton is basically the first Kubernetes native uh, pipeline execution engine. And how does it work? So I will just, let's say, go through the basics. So we have a few custom resource definitions. So identify, let's say, five building blocks, but they are actually increasing. And there is also a tiny uh, controller, which is wa watching for CRDs in our Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster. So this is, uh, let's say, a bird eye view of the resources. So let's go quickly through them. But first, a question. Who here is uh, already using Tecton? So. I think, I believe, a few guys, I believe there are even a few Tecton uh, developers here, so I hope not to say any bullshit. So we have a pipeline, as usual. A pipeline is a collection of tasks. A task 
in Tecton is executed within a pod in uh, Kubernetes. You can execute tasks basically sequentially or in parallel. Normally, you would define the so-called directed acyclic uh, graph. And of course, pods are basically orchestrated by Kubernetes. In other words, they can run on different nodes. A task, task we said runs within a pod and defines a sequence of steps. Each step is basically executed within a container. And normally they're executing sequentially as we define them in the YAML definition. I know you all love YAML, especially for the indentation. So if, if we want to run a pipeline, we use normally a pipeline run. So it's a CRD to instantiate. If you think about, let's say, object-oriented programming, we can think about a class and then an object out of that class, let's say, more or less. So a pipeline run allows us also to bind resources, so pipeline resources, at runtime. So for instance, Git repositories or Docker images and so on. Now, tasks can be run in isolation, so you can see at the bottom task runs. So you can do that, or you can execute the pipeline, of course, within, uh, through a pipeline uh, run. This is, again, the complete picture. So my opinion, so I I'm pretty amazed by Tecton, because pipelines are now cloud-native, so are based on containers, orchestrated dynamically by Kubernetes. And they are decoupled because we can actually execute pipelines on any Kubernetes cluster, on any cloud provider, of course. We can run tasks in isolation. We can compose them as we wish, basically. And we can bind resources dynamically at runtime. It's pretty cool, in my opinion. But this was the boring stuff. So I. I Pray the demo gods. So for I try to wake them up. Hopefully they are with me, with Wi-Fi, with everything. I will sit for a second. So let's see. So just guys, just shout if you have any trouble uh, seeing from uh, from the bottom. A little bit more. No worries, and I will also zoom during uh, the steps. So I, for time reasons, I already have a Kubernetes cluster with Tecton installed. We can, oh, let's see if the Wi-Fi is still working. I will, so I have a Kubernetes cluster with three nodes here. And let's see the Tecton controller is running, luckily here so and watching for custom resource definitions we can see the crds here for example we can see the tecton one and so on okay so now what do i want to do i want to basically build test package and deploy a really simple application so it's a spring boot pet clinic uh, application so I have the code over here in the pet clinic uh, canico folder. As you can see, this is just a super simple Spring Boot application. You can see the, the starter parent. You can see a few dependencies, the actuator, the starter for uh, using relational databases, the, the web starter for uh, REST endpoints and so on. So, and yeah, you can see basically this is a classic Spring Boot application, so nothing really fancy. Okay, now I would like to deploy this application basically on my Kubernetes cluster. In order to do that, I also have another folder, so basically Git repos on my GitHub, if you want to, to have a look at, at them. The, 
deploy, let's say, the deploy folder. The deploy folder just contains Kubernetes uh, definitions. You can see here a classic deployment. We will run one replica here. We specify our container, so taking it from, the, from a container registry. I defined a few resource limits and requests and the classic readiness and liveness probes. This is what, what we will use, let's say, to deploy our, our application. So the third folder here, the pet clinic tecton, contains my pipeline. But before, before going, let's say, through the tasks and the pipeline, I would like to apply the resources so that while the pipeline is building, we can go through the YAML definition. Okay, so everything is in the pet clinic tecton, I said. Okay, so let's apply a service account for access rights. Then let's deploy the pet clinic pipeline. Now, I want also my resources. And finally, so after now applying the, 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 basically the objects, I would like to run the pipeline. So I'm using the pet clinic run. Okay, so let's see if we have our stuff. Okay, so we can see, don't worry now about them, we go through the YAML definitions, we can see three tasks. Let's see if we have the pipeline, yeah. Same stuff can be done with the Tecton CLI, so Tecton comes also with, a, and with an ND CLI, so you can also play with that, and we can see we have our stuff. Okay, so let's go now to while the pipeline is building. It's gonna take like three, four minutes. Let's go through the pipeline definition. As you can see, it's, it's really short. So, but I have a, a really, I have a really complicated application. Any questions still now? Okay. So we said we want to build, test, package, and deploy a small Spring Boot application. In order to do that, I defined three tasks. The build maven, the container build, and the deployment. And then I grouped together all of them in a pipeline. Let's go now through the tasks. So you can see a Tecton task here. And this is the Maven build. A task normally must specify, of course, at least one step. This is mandatory. And can specify inputs and outputs. In this case, you can see over here, we have a few inputs. So a workspace, a Git workspace. It contains, of course, our code and a parameter. It can be anything you want. For example, the artifact name, the artifact version. It could be a git token, anything. In this case, for example, I'm just specifying a working directory, for instance. So in order now to build our code, we need to specify steps, which are executed within containers. And as you can see here, we have the, the important step, the Maven build, which is executed in a container, which contains Maven and the JDK. As you can see, we execute the classic command, maven clean install. And here, I'm also executing the tests because I like to do TDD. But if we want to do something else, we could even uncomment it. But this would be called JDD, Jesus driven development. So <laughs> just, just push something, let's say, on Git and 
pray that it works. Sometimes I have seen that in the projects. So now we have another task, the container build. The task is named build Canico. As you can see here, we also specify a few input resources. <clears throat> and the input resource comes from the previous task, is basically the workspace containing the artifacts. And we have also a few parameters, for example, the Docker file path over here. The output, of course, as you can imagine, is a container image. Now, the step. I have one step, which is the Canico build. So Canico is, a, by the way, a tool in order to build container images inside a Kubernetes cluster without mounting the Docker socket. And you know that has some security issues. So I'm using Canico here. And as you can see, I mount a secret in order to be able to deploy to the container registry and expose the secret as an environment variable. Then we have the third task, the last one, is the deployment task. Here, the input is a Git repository because we said we have our manifests in a Git repository separated from the code. So this is at least my personal preference. So that, for example, I don't need to rebuild the code if, if I just change a YAML definition. But there are other strategies as well if you want just to use a a single repo. We have also a few parameters, as you can see, which, for example, the, the deployment, the file, the YAML file we want to use, and the steps. So the first one is, doesn't really matter. It's for cleanup stuff. This one, that's the important one. So the kubectl deploy. So here, I'm just using a container which contains the kubectl CLI. And I, I'm executing kubectl apply. Now, we have three tasks. We group together in a pipeline. A pipeline definition, you can see that here, named pet clinic pipeline in my case. We can define a few resources, which will be passed to the, to the tasks. In this case, you see two Git repositories and one Docker image. We could have defined parameters, but I didn't really need that for the demo. And then we start listing the tasks. We can see the first task, which was the Maven clean install, so the Maven build. We reference our task, and we specify the resources. You can think at this stage in the pipeline, when you start passing resources, at least that's my perception, as logical resources. The physical resources will be represented in, the, in another uh, CRD, which we'll, we'll see later. So here we specify which, <coughs> basically, resources the tasks will be using. And of course, the pipeline can override resources and parameters defined within our tasks. So we have seen the first task reference. The second task reference, of course, is referencing the Canico build, the container build. And we have a few resources. Here, there is something interesting in the input resources. We see at this line, we are receiving a, a, a repository. And this repository is coming from the previous task. So basically, we are with this keyword, we can basically define sequential execution, so ordering of the tasks. So this task cannot start before we have a jar, for example. Then the output, of course, is the Docker container. The last step, we said we want to deploy with the kubectl. So the pet clinic deploy. So basically, the task is referenced here. And here, how do we guarantee ordering? We don't have a logical binding between input and output resources because we are building, a, basically, we are applying a Kubernetes manifest. Therefore, I need to specify that I want to, of course, deploy the container image 
after I have a container image, of course. Then we have a few pipeline resources, as we said. In our case, we have three resources. You can see the first one in the spec, a Git repo, which is pointing to my GitHub. It contains the, the pet clinic application. Then another one which points to the container image in the con stored in the container registry. As you can see, the type here is an image. And then the last one is, again, a Git repository which contains the Kubernetes manifest. In order to run the pipeline, the last so manifest we have a look at is the pipeline run. So here we are instantiated. We are starting our pipeline. We can specify service accounts in order for to have different rights. And of course, here we perform the binding between the pipeline resources we have defined previously here. And basically our tasks. So these will be the resources provided to the task execution. That's it. OK, hope everything uh, is clear. So let's see what's going on here. Wow, the demo gods, at least for now, are with me. So we can see our application up and running. And we can see also three completed uh, pods. These are the pods which executed the three tasks. You can see the Maven build, you can see the container image build, and you can see the deployment. OK, so we can use the Tecton CLI to get some information, for example, about the task runs. OK, we have three task runs. So started, for example, seven minutes ago, status succeeded. If we want some more information, we can see, for example, the task run describe. And I want to describe, for example, the Maven build. So here you can basically see what we have defined in the YAML definition. So, the, well, we have the status, success, luckily. We have input resources. We have here output resources, still a Git repo and a few steps. So we can see, for example, the one we care about, the Maven build. The, some other of them are automatically generated by Tecton. So if we want to get some logs, oh, well, let's list the tasks again. So if I want to get some logs, I can say log for my task run. We should be able for probably it's logs. So we can see, hopefully, the, well, the Wi-Fi is, yeah, it's fast enough. So we can see classic, the Maven logs, so downloading the, the word, basically. OK, cool. So our application now is deployed uh, to the Kubernetes cluster, and I'm exposing it using uh, a Kubernetes service. I will show that to you. So we have a Kubernetes service here of type load balancer. So a controller inside my Kubernetes cluster is automatically generating a cloud L4 load balancer with an, an ephemeral IP address. So. I can get the service. This is the external IP. So let's try to access it. It was port 1990. Yeah, so super complex application. But it's here up and running. OK, now let's continue with a few slides. So we have seen Tecton pipelines, which are awesome. They are scalable, they are portable, they are decoupled. But in my opinion, 
as, let's say, as a consultant dealing with code and middleware, what I see is that for the average developer, which in my opinion is more than half of, uh, let's say, of the developer population, for, for most of the developers, define such pipelines is a bit complicated. Generally, Kubernetes is a little bit complicated. And when something is complicated, it becomes error prone. So a, a normal developer, what I see by the customer, just cares about building the code, deploying it, but they don't want really to understand the underlying infrastructure and all the tricks. And also because in my opinion, everything is awesome, Kubernetes, especially extended with Tecton. But Kubernetes in my opinion, and of course OpenShift, they are like a baby. It's really nice to play with, but you don't know when they start crying. So something can happen. So that's where basically Jenkins X comes in. So Jenkins X, even though the names it looks like is the old Jenkins, it's a complete, so basically it's a, a new project. So the Cloud Bees uh, folks, they are trying to re-architect Jenkins for the cloud. At the beginning, actually, it was even based on the static Jenkins master, but then it evolved. So Jenkins basically tries not to reinvent the wheel. Tecton is pretty good already. So Jenkins X is trying to build an abstraction on top of Tecton with a few additional controllers, which basically, translate Tecton, uh, the Jenkins X YAML, this time pipelines, into Tecton resources. So we are used, I, I think most of us, to the classic Jenkins file with the Groovy DSL. The new, let's say, Jenkins X pipeline is exactly the same, but just defined as YAML and translated into Tecton resources. And something I really find awesome is about Jenkins X is the use of GitOps. So what is GitOps? Basically, we, not, we don't just define code on a Git repo, the infrastructure, the pipelines, but also we define the operational, let's say, knowledge. So the, the configuration of the CI-CD ecosystem, which environments do we have? staging, production, everything is represented in Git. Which application do we have on staging? Which version? Everything is on Git. We have an audit log. We can revert in case of troubles. We have seen the, the picture at the beginning about real life deployments. And of course, it's also pretty cool in case of disaster recovery, in my opinion. Jenkins X, so as just a drawback. So I would like to first start with this slide. So it's awesome, and I will try to show a little demo to you, but of course, as a few drawbacks. It's opinionated, and in my opinion, is not yet rock solid. So as a lot of moving parts. So Tecton, the, the Jenkins X controllers, the webhook handler with Prow also for chat operations, so sometimes being based on so many tools it makes the tool really shaky. And as you can imagine, as I was preparing the demo, so in the last few days, there were a few regression bugs, which let's say will uh, not allow me to show the complete uh, application deployed uh, on, uh, on production. But I will try to show you the best I, uh, I can at the moment. So I already have Jenkins X installed in, a, in another Kubernetes cluster. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Jenkins X comes with a handy CLI. As you can see, I have the CLI here. Now let's switch the context. Now I want to use the Jenkins X cluster. So how did I install it? The best way to install it would be Jenkins X boot. With the Jenkins X boot, you start from a Git repository, which represents the CI CD configuration, and you install it on your Kubernetes cluster. So I have, for instance, an example here. 
this is the repo, the Jenkins X boot config repo. As you can see, there is a bunch, a lot of stuff. Probably the most important one is here, the requirements. For example, we can say which is the cluster, the owner on GitHub, which environments do we have? For example, a development environment, a staging environment. Do we have TLS enabled? Everything. So configuration for the ingress controller, storage, and so on. So everything is pinned up with the JX boot. In alternative, since as I said, it's not super stable yet, but I, I truly believe it's really promising. Otherwise, you can use the JX install command. Now, let's see what's it, what is running on this Kubernetes cluster. So we have a bunch of stuff, as you can see. And everything has been installed just by typing JX boot or JX install. You can see here this guy here, install out of the box. You have the Tecton pipeline controller. Then you have a few Jenkins X specific controllers here, which will cooperate and also translate the, the Jenkins pipeline into Tecton definition. You can see a, a, a just, we don't care now about names, but just for you to know. So this is basically another application which is used as a webhook handler. This is Prow, which is used by the Kubernetes project itself. So we have a bunch of stuff already installed. Now we can get also the CRDs. And as you can see, I'm not lying. So everything has been installed by Jenkins X. I believe this is pretty awesome. Now, let's try to get the environments. We said we are using GitOps. Our environments are represented on Git. Cool. So Jenkins X is opinionated and starts by default with two environments, a staging environment and a production environment. The staging environment has automatic promotion since we are doing CD. And you can see here is automatic promotion. Then we have production. Here by default is manual. But if you want to do continuous deployment, if let's say the team is mature enough and we have everything automated, why not? At the moment, everything is told just uh, on a single Kubernetes cluster and the environments are represented by different namespaces, as you can see in this column over here. The team, as far as I know, so I used to cooperate in the open source community a little bit with the Jenkins X guys. They told me they are working also on multi-cluster uh, support. So as you can see, we have a Git repo, for example, for staging. So this is my personal GitHub. And as you can see, the staging configuration is completely under version control. And everything that is deployed on this namespace, on this environment, is represented here as a, as a dependency. So for example, two controllers. When we had applications, they will be added automatically to this repository through a pull request. Automatically, we said, for staging. For production, of course, you would open manually a pull request. I want to promote, for example, the microservice X version two on production. You open a pull request. This is going to be reviewed. And this is pretty awesome because everything you do, even the, pro the promotion of microservices, let's say, goes under version control. Now, I said that the um, last version is affected by a few regression bugs. It means I will not be able to show the complete uh, application running on production, but still, I would like to show you how you would create a microservice or how you would import a microservice. So I have a, a, a copy of the pet clinic application. So 
square here. So as you can see, that's exactly the same application, the pet clinic, it's just a, co a, a copy. Now, in order to, to import this application, what do we do? First of all, okay, we enter the directory. Then we say, JX import, please demo God be with me. So in this case, we want to import this microservice. So I want to use my GitHub. So Jenkins X guides us through the process of importing microservices. Yeah, initializes the Git repo for us with an initial commit. And also now in a few steps, here it is, it's gonna apply a build pack in this case a Maven build pack. So it basically scans the, the POM, realizes in this case it's a, a Java project, and applies a build pack, providing everything we need to build and deploy our application to Kubernetes. In other terms, for example, a Docker file, Kubernetes manifest, and of course, the CICD pipeline. So now, let's see if it, at least this works. So. Now we are importing our microservice on my personal GitHub, and Jenkins X is also registering a webhook, let's say, which will notify our Jenkins X, therefore Tecton, in order to start the pipeline. So here probably the Wi-Fi is a little bit slow, but it looks like now it's actually creating and pushing the, the repository. And here it is, we have the webhook register as well. So we have now everything is already on Git. If we wanna see, let's say, the activity, we just, we can do that. As you can see, the pipeline is running, but unfortunately it's failing for the bug I was telling you about before. Important to notice is here an automatically generated step, which is creating the Tecton CRDs. So if we want to get logs, let's say if it can fetch something, we can get the build logs, for example, for the pipelines associated to the repository or to our microservice. So now it's trying to fetch logs. Of course, there is a small failure here. Cool. So this is just a really short introduction. I really encourage you to try it out also together with Tecton. Okay. We already talked about the drawbacks. So let's go forward. Let's recap. What have we, have we introduced today? Cloud native CICD, which is awesome. We have seen Tecton as a Kubernetes native pipeline execution engine. Afterwards, we have seen Jenkins X and we have seen that it's based on Tecton. So there is no competition actually. Jenkins X and the, the, the Cloud Beast guys are, are also cooperating with Red Hat and other companies to Tecton. So this is pretty awesome. Not yet, I would say production ready, but really promising and it really allows developers to, let's say, to speed up operations. So Cloud Native CICD is pretty cool, but in my opinion, this is not a silver bullet. It, nothing, in my opinion, nothing in IT is a silver bullet. Why? Because the biggest challenges we see are not technical challenges. Normally the biggest challenges are human challenges. So my last message for this short presentation is always be curious, always keep learning and keep sharing because knowledge in my opinion is something that it doesn't make us poorer if we share it, it's not like money. Thank you. So if you have any questions, Question. I would be happy to try to answer. Yes. I saw there was just a brief example of the handling of multiple environments, automatic promotion of staging, manual promotion of production. How does it work? Uh, as we have a separate development, uh, Kubernetes cluster separate staging cluster separate uh, production cluster. How does it work? <coughs> 
OK, so the question was, now we have seen that we have staging and production different environments as namespaces in the same cluster. What happens if we have different clusters? So at the moment, is work in progress, as far as I know. That the trick here, so the, let's say, the Jenkins X guys are building a, a custom controller which allows the clusters to communicate with each other. So we will have one cluster which is just for CI-CD and other clusters with a tiny controller connected through Istio. And so everything is basically encrypted and they will be able, like in a multi-cluster solution, they will be able to communicate. But as you have seen, it's still already a, 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 still a bit uh, shaky, even though it's promising. But I, as far as I know, so the final answer is, is under development. Yes. Uh, so, not, not necessarily. So, yeah, I will repeat the question for the, those at the back. So, do you still need always the Docker file? Not necessarily. So, it depends how you build the application. So, for example, in the case of uh, Tecton, I used Canico, but for example, we can use a scaffold. And, or we could use build packs. So it depends what you configure. So in my case, I'm using the Docker file here, but it's not mandatory. And that's actually what Jenkins X is doing. So if we check, for example, what I imported, I have the My Pet Clinic application, which at the, be at the beginning was pretty tiny. And here we have, for example, Docker file and also a scaffold definition. This is what he's using to build the Docker containers. And by the way, this is the Jenkins X pipeline. It's really complicated, as you see. Sorry. So. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. So the question was about Argo CD and uh, the usage with GitOps. So I have played just shortly with Argo, so I'm not really an expert, but as far as I have seen, so Argo is just a CD solution. So it's not a CI solution. It's, so it's used to deploy stuff continuously to Kubernetes or even OpenShift. So the comparison, in my opinion, is Argo is more specific for CD. Jenkins X tries to do a little bit of everything. So, please. So. Okay, so this is a really interesting question. So what I, what I have seen is basically, what I have shown is basically the, the open source version. There is support for security and all this enterprise stuff, but of course there is an enterprise, an enterprise add-ons which you have to install on top of it. So it's, it's possible also to integrate it, for example, with uh, LDAP, it's even possible to integrate it with Vault for secret encryption, but some add-ons are, uh, are not for free. So, I think I'm out of time, unfortunately, but I will be hanging out, hanging out uh, a, li a little bit outside. Thank you.